Welcome back to our special holiday edition of the Plus Side of Nashville. A sure sign the holidays are here is when we start seeing twinkling lights hanging everywhere. Take a look at how the pros do it. the season to slay the holidays and what better way to start getting festive than decorating your house with lights like Clark Griswold from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation or maybe not. We're not here. You can't be driving through neighborhoods just when the sun goes down and seeing all the magic and the, the twinkling lights that everyone chooses to bring up. To make your holidays a little jollier, we spoke with World of Illumination creative director Aaron Curry. He's teaching us how to light up our homes like a pro. First thing to do is to look at your house and come up with a plan of what it is that you want to highlight. Figure out what your aesthetic is and then tell your story from there. Starting by finding the major lines on your house. A lot of people choose to go with lining the edges of their roof lining the windows, the doors. Those focal points are always the best places to start. Now, you are an expert when it comes to the aesthetic. I am not. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking only white lights. When should you mix and match lights? You know, the holidays are the perfect time to have fun, you know, to express yourself in a world of color. So, you know, just go with whatever you feel like suits you. Next, it's time to prepare your lights. It's really important to get them all out, untangle them, and then plug them into a wall outlet before you take them up. Can't tell you how many times I've had family members go and put their lights up, climb the ladder to the top of their roof, and start putting things up on their house, and then they plug them in and nothing turns on. It's the one light bulb. <laughs> it's that one light it's bulb. It's the one light bulb. <laughs> so I'm not quite Clark Griswold yet, uh, but I'm certainly well on my way. What kind of tools do we need? Well, of course, you need the lights, which you can get from your local hardware store. You need electrical cords that are rated for outdoor use so that way you can run your lights to your power sources. And then you need things to connect your lights to your house with. I remember growing up, my father would put nails right. into the roof. This is go. what I'm thinking. I'm looking at my roof. I'm like, I don't want to put nails in it. There are clips that you can buy that you can attach to the shingles of your roof. You can also buy like the 3M command clips as well that you can get from any hardware store. And a helpful tip, measure out where you will place your lights before starting so you make sure you have enough. We're going to need a lot of lights. Oh, and don't forget a ladder. Now that you've planned and prepped, it's time to get started. Let's go this oh, way. This way. It's get like a the sheet. Long side. Yeah, truly. <laughs> yeah. Get the long side, and then you just drape them over. Okay, so now you're all finished. All you have to do is sit back, relax, and flip the switch and watch the magic happen. We are gifting you the gift of joy through DIY lights at home. Seeing twinkling lights everywhere, you can't help but get in the holiday spirit. And here's something else that will brighten your day this holiday season. A gift that keeps giving all year long. Miss Cheap shows us where to find membership deals at some of Nashville's best attractions. If you're looking for a gift that keeps on giving, Mary Hens, Miss Cheap, has some ideas for ways to keep you and your family entertained with fun outings all year long. I think this is a great gift idea. Well, I think memberships are one of the best gifts you can give as a family. You know, you can give them to a family or you can give them to your own family. Um, but I think they're a great way to support some of our attractions in town. You know, everybody's had a hard time with COVID and with their attendance down. And I think the memberships are a good way to offer your support to them. But for you as the, as the recipient of one of these, I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, if you're going to go to any of these attractions more than maybe two or three times, it'll pay for itself in that time. And then you get all these perks, like you get, you know, discounts in the gift shop, maybe free parking. Uh, you get discounts in the restaurants if they have a restaurant on site. Um, and then some of them even have camps where you get some discounted deals. And then what I really love are the reciprocal deals where if you, if you join, then you get to go to some other attractions in other cities, either for a discounted rate or for free. I love it. Well, let's talk about some of the ones that are the most popular in Nashville. The Nashville Zoo certainly has a great membership program. Right. I just joined the Nashville Zoo and I, I got a membership for $150 and it includes me and any guest and then as many as six children in my household, which are grandchildren or children. And so I've already been three or four times and the kids love it. It's a great way to entertain them and you know, it's, it's just a great value. And, it's, you know, you're always looking for something to do with kids, and that, that's a perfect outing. Sure. Does it cover your adult children? 
No. Okay. <laughs> they could be my guest, though. They could. You know, I could okay. take one of them as a guest. That makes sense. But, I, you know, I have some friends who we walk with, and they just they said they hadn't been to the zoo lately. And I said, well, we can just go on my membership. We know, well, you can go with me, and we'll just take a walk in the zoo. I love so it. It's beautiful walking, and it's, it's a beautiful place. That's a great idea. Uh, something else the kids are going to love, the Adventure Science Center. It's great to visit once, but they have so many programs that go all year long. Right, and like the zoo, things are changing all the time. I mean, in the Adventure Science Center, I think the um, membership there is $150 and $139. And you, you've got all kind of kids deals in there, and they have camps in the summer that you could get a discount. And they ha have a reciprocal deal, and I think you could even go to, to the um, Space Center in, in Huntsville for, with a discount from them. But they yes. have like 300 different attractions around the country that you could go to. That's great. The Country Music Hall of Fame, of course, if you're a country fan, is a must. And when you have folks coming in from out of town, it's great to take them as well. But there's, again, so many programs throughout the year that can turn you into a fan. Right, and they, their exhibits change all the time. I think it's $115 for their, for their membership. And children under 18 get in free through their Community Counts program in the surrounding counties. Um, and so that's that's a great deal to be able to take the kids. But they have songwriter sessions. They have concerts. You get you get invited to special member uh, events and things. And I think all the all of these attractions try to really cater to their members and give you you know first in on when they have a really big exhibit or something fun to do that they give you the first choice on it. Yeah, they make it really worth your while to they support do. them and buy a membership. Uh, the Frist Center for the Visual Arts, now called the Frist Art Museum, um, has a great program as well. Well, and it. You you know, children 18 and under get in free there all the time, so you don't really need to include them in your membership. But you can get a $50 membership for as little as that uh, to get in all the time. And, I, you know, that includes some parking deals. And, again, you get invited to the first show when, when they've got a new exhibit coming. And you can be, I think you can bring a guest. I think you get one guest pass with that, too. Nice. And discounts uh, in the gift shop, too. Oh, I love the discounts in the gift shop. Most of these places have really cool gift shops. Yeah. Before we go, Cheekwood also, a, a lovely place year-round. Well, they have a, a family deal for $115, and, and kids can go. And again, you know, they're changing all the time, and they have special events that you may not, members may not get in free, but they get a discount to. And it's just a great place to go walk around in the pretty weather and a great place to go inside to the museum on days that are, are maybe a little inclement. But yeah. these attractions are really worth it and again it's a great way to support these attractions in our town for sure all right think about that for your holiday gifts as always thanks mary thanks stacy those are great ideas for anyone but especially for families and finally today a real holiday mood killer is seeing people in your family fight here's expert advice on how to avoid arguments in your family Family functions often lead to inevitable, awkward questions. When are you getting married? When are you having kids? Have you gained weight? Here's the thing. We all have nosy families, and the best thing you can do is prepare for them. Celebrity communication, body language, and confidence coach Karen Donaldson is getting us ready to handle these questions without ruining the holidays. Her first tip? Know your personal boundaries and maintain them because it's okay. And if you don't maintain your personal boundaries, no one else will. Before going into the situation, know what you will answer, know what you won't answer, and know what you want to stay clear of altogether. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say I don't want to talk about it. But we want to be clear with ourselves so we don't get guilted into answering questions or talking about things we don't want to talk about. Next, be intentional with your tone. Because if you use the wrong tone, it can change the entire interaction in a matter of seconds. You don't want to get defensive, but you do want to be assertive. Use I statements, because when you use I statements like, you know, I'm really not comfortable answering that question, or I'd rather we not talk about it here at the dinner table, you're showcasing that you're taking responsibility and ownership for how you feel and how you think, and you're also letting people know, instead of hoping that people read your mind and see your uncomfortable nature at the table and hope, hoping that they won't ask the question. And that's why her third tip is preparation is key. If you go back to your family gatherings, you kind of know who's going to ask questions. But outside of that, you want to practice some questions and more important, practice your responses. So a lot of the time, why people feel uncomfortable with these nosy questions is they're simply unprepared. And Karen says you've got to practice your responses out loud. It's harder to 
hear something in your head and say it for the first time, especially when you have that layer of it's my auntie and I want to be respectful. And finally, you can redirect the question. This can be done a few ways. The first technique is with a little bit of humor. Don't get defensive and kind of play with it. So I always say sometimes if this is your personality or if you're open to it, challenge it. Have fun with it and challenge it. So if they say, you know, when are you having kids? You might say, well, that's a really good question. But when are you having kids? The other tactic is to move the conversation along quickly. Once you answer, answer to Make it short and to the point and answer as much as you want to without going deeper. And the quickest thing to move on is you now be the person asking questions. Take away the shine from you and <laughs> redirect it to someone else. Preparing you for that time of year when every sister, uncle, aunt, and cousin's brother's wife is ready to dive into your personal life at the top of the list. Well, that's all the time we have for this special holiday edition of the Plus Side of Nashville. Thanks to Diane Dameron for being with us and bringing some delicious brunch recipes. And thank you for watching. I'm Tawanda Coleman. Happy holidays, everybody.